Today's video is sponsored by Pickers Grip. Stop dropped picks and pick rotation while playing with Pickers Grip. Made with all natural ingredients in Virginia. Check out their website to order. When you support my sponsor, this also supports my channel and it's very much appreciated. How come Superman can bounce bullets off of his chest, but he always ducks whenever somebody throws a gun at him? Come on, Supes. Hello, I'm Robert. Thank you so much for joining me here today in my home studio. These may not be the 20 greatest guitar riffs of all time, but they are certainly 20 of my favorites. It's always interesting to see how many people get bent out of shape over a title like that. <laughs> but that title is also designed to uh, continue on with the theme of several other video titles on this channel. So, yes, that is correct. These are 20 of my all-time favorite guitar riffs, and I wanted to uh, take some time today here in a video and share them all with you. The first one that I want to share is Enter Sandman by Metallica, uh, and the reason why this riff is important to me is because, you know, this when the Black Album came out, you know, Metallica did the, you know, did the 12.01 a.m. Re release thing, you know, in the middle of the night, and, uh, you know, I stayed up all night and bought it, uh, stood in line for hours and hours and hours at Best Buy to go get it. <laughs> the following week at my guitar lesson, you know, the Enter Sandman had been all over the radio for several you know for you know quite a while at that point and uh was a, you know already a huge hit and uh i walked into my uh into my lesson and uh you know there's you know four or five of my friends that all had lessons you know lined up right before me and when i got in there and sat down and said i wanted to learn to enter sandman he said the last five people have come in here wanting to learn metallica i am metallica out <laughs> But you know, by that point, he had already taught you know he'd already taught the song five or six times and knew it pretty well. But yeah, you know, but it's it's a it's a really really cool riff and very recognizable at this point. <laughs> Uh, aspiring rock metal guitar player learning to play in the 80s and early 90s uh, you know the previous generation you know who were teaching us how to play you know had grown up on uh, uh, a lot of the stuff from the late 60s and 70s and uh, you know in the early 80s of course so rush was very popular among that generation and they they passed it on to people like me and uh, you know I, I discovered very early on uh, you know just how awesome of a band rush actually are and one of the very first rush riffs that i that i figured out on my own um you know when i was like 14 was working man and you know it's kind of got a you know it was off their first album and you know it's kind of got you know just this uh you know kind of rocking slow driving kind of uh, kind of feel to it and uh it's a, it's a really really cool riff <laughs> This next riff is from a band that uh, was real popular in the 90s called Helmet. And, uh, you know, if you're part of the younger generation, you may or may not be familiar with them. If you're my age, you probably remember them. They were, they, ca they came up in the grunge era, but they were way different from everybody else because they, you know, they, every song that they played was like, was tuned down to drop D. All of their songs seemed to have like these, you know, real like staccato uh, type of, you know, one finger power chords in them. And, uh, you know, the, the first song of theirs I remember anyway, being a, a real popular song of theirs was one called Unsung and uh, one that I practiced for, I would play over and over and over again for hours just because I thought it was a cool riff. <laughs> We 
one thing that I learned while working in a guitar shop is guitar players tend to play the same the same riffs and the same songs uh, over and over and over again, particularly when testing out gear. And that's why you see me using kind of, you know, the same, you know, the same riffs and stuff, you know, kind of over and over and over again on my videos. Part of it's just out of habit. Uh, and part of it is because, you know, I know the riff real well and I know how something, you know, how I expect something to sound uh, when playing a particular song with it. Uh, and I think it's a lot more common than a lot of people realize because, you know, when it, again, working in a guitar shop, you see, you know, the regular customers coming in over and over and over again, and you can, you can pick them out by listening to them because, you know, they play the same, again, same riffs, you know, through different amps and different guitars or whatever. But one of my favorite clean riffs is a song by Dokken, uh, called Into the Fire, and it starts out with uh, well, it starts out with a couple of you know like really hard driving chords, and then you know and then it immediately goes into this uh, reverby chorusy uh, arpeggiated riff, which I've just always loved the sound of, and uh, you know once I learned to play the riff, I also discovered it's a lot of fun to play. So it goes something like this. <laughs> Nowadays, if you're playing in a in a bar band, a rock cover, uh, a rock cover band, uh, bar band, "Lay It Down" by Rat is kind of a staple song that a lot of bands really, really like to play, and uh, you know it's because it's a great song. Uh, you know, and the the main riff to it is is really challenging, but it can be simplified to where it sounds, you know, at least to me, pretty close. You know, being that I've got you know kind of small, stubby, short fingers, you know, it's really, really difficult for me to make those, you know five and six fret stretches. I play it like this. Kiss are one of my all-time favorite bands, and once upon a time, I decided that I was uh, sick of being just a rhythm guitar player and knew I was a absolute, you know, if you think I'm a terrible lead player now, you should have met me like 20 years ago, um, and uh, I decided that I wanted to start learning to play lead guitar a little bit more and you know, at least learn a few more solos, and uh, my guitar teacher said, let's start with this, this is a really, really uh, easy solo, and uh, you know, this will get you on the right track and he was right but the main riff to the song she is also really really cool and uh it's it wasn't really a big radio hit for him by any means but is this is always one of, always a really really popular song for them in their live set when they play it <laughs> We all know that Eddie Van Halen is one of the greatest guitar players to ever live. He's an absolute genius at playing the guitar. He's a genius at songwriting. Uh, one of the, you know, the one of the earliest hits was a song called "Ain't Talking About Love," which he also, you know, was also a song that uh, helped propel the MXR Phase 90 phaser pedal phaser pedal to uh, the legendary status that it has reached today. But the intro to that song is one of the most iconic. Uh, intros, uh, rock intros that I can think of, and goes like this. <laughs> Thunderstruck by ACDC is one of my all-time favorite stadium anthems, and it is a rocking stadium anthem. Uh, you know, the it's got that that uh, that tapping intro to it. 
which is you know which at this point is really really famous and the first time i heard that song i was like wow that's really really cool uh and he did tap it but if you watch the live version uh, the version that they played live at the monsters of rock tour you know when they were out touring behind that behind that record he actually played it with a pick and that live version has always been my favorite version of the song uh you know i think it captures the energy of the whole of the whole song better than uh, than any other version i've ever heard you know but angus young actually did pick it uh did pick that that particular riff instead of finger tapping it and uh that makes it sound like this which i think gives it a little bit more edge <laughs> If you're into power metal, you have to be into Iron Maiden. And if you've ever, if you've never seen Iron Maiden, I don't know that there is a live music adrenaline rush any bigger than when they play the intro to the Trooper because that's one of their most popular songs. Uh, that's another one of the songs that rock cover bands, you know, all over the world play live. Uh, it's just a, it's a lot of fun to play. It's a lot of fun to listen to. It's a lot of fun for you know. It's just a lot. It's just a great song all together. <laughs> There seems to be this real weird rivalry between Iron Maiden fans and Judas Priest fans, and you know there are a lot of a lot of fans of of each of those bands that don't like the other. I've never understood that. The same, I guess, the same thing is also true between Metallica and Megadeth. I've you know because I love both of those bands as well, but I, I've never understood the rivalry between uh, between Maiden and and Priest fans, uh, especially because there doesn't really seem to be any rivalry between the bands themselves. Yep. But that said, Judas Priest uh, are you know they've got tons and tons and tons of great riffs uh, across their catalog but in 1991 i believe when the uh, when painkiller came out uh that was the heaviest record they had ever ever put out before and i was blown away particularly by the title track uh i had never heard you know that was one of the heaviest riffs i had ever heard <laughs> Motley Crue are another band who are, you know, of course they've, they've got plenty of their own of their own hits and they're plenty of their own great killer riffs, uh, but they're they're another one of those bands that you know their music just takes on an entirely different life of its own when uh, when they when they're playing their live show and one song in particular is uh, is Ten Seconds to Love uh, that was on their very first on their first album. Uh, called Too Fast for Love, and the studio version of this song is is okay, but uh, you know they they did a live version of it that they lay that much later released on their uh, Red, White, and Crew uh, compilation album. Thirty years later, probably, and the way that Mick Mars played the played that riff in that live show was unlike anything I'd ever heard, and made me fall in love with the song. And he played it something like this. <laughs> I like rock and metal songs that 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 have uh, an arpeggiated, a clean arpeggiated riff of some kind, like an intro or uh, or a chorus or something like that in it. Just because I think it adds another dimension to uh, to the song, you know, in in the right instances, of course. And with uh, you know, Metallica, of course, have had several, and one of the, my all time favorites is Fade to Black. And you know, uh, I've also always loved Metallica's clean tone. You know, both James and Kirk have always used uh, the Roland JC 120, which is my all time favorite clean amp, uh, you know, combined with. Uh, various chorus and reverb and delay effects and stuff like that, and uh, you know, and just the entire uh, the entire ambience, the entire aura of that clean arpeggiated riff to fade to black, uh, you know, has been a riff that has inspired me through pretty much throughout my entire life. <laughs> Thank you. 
Cinderella are, uh, I suppose you can consider them a hair metal band from the 80s, as they were certainly a big part of that era. You know, but they definitely had a lot more uh, blues inspiration in a lot of their riffs. And, you know, they weren't real big on uh, on effects or anything like that. And, uh, you know, they were they they were pretty much guys that uh, that plugged their Les Paul standards into Marshall JCM8, straight into Marshall JCM800 half stacks. And, uh, you know, to me, that was the sound that a Les Paul into a Marshall JCM800 is supposed to be. You know, and one of my all-time favorite guitar tones, and uh, that guitar tone is all over the place on probably their most popular song called Gypsy Road. Uh, with this, this is another song that uh, that you see me use to demo gear in my videos quite a bit, and that one sounds like this. <laughs> Everybody's familiar with the main intro riff to Crazy Train, as that's a, a riff that guitar teachers teach young, uh, young aspiring rock guitar students all over the world. You know, <laughs> but I actually really liked the uh, the riff to the verse, uh, and you know, I, I really like the way that Randy Rhodes constructed it, and uh, you know, use some use some some fragments of you know some very really just some various different bar chords you know, along with some tremolo picking techniques and uh you know it was and the way that he wrote that also allowed him to implement various different randy Rhodes fills along the way <laughs> Tom Morello is a very, very unique guitar player, and, uh, you know, Rage Up Against the Machine would not have been anything close to what they were without him. Uh, you know, he's uh, he, he kind of attacks playing the guitar unlike anybody else, really, that uh, at least nobody, at least that I have seen, uh, and way, way ahead of his time. And like Tom Morello, I'm also a big fan of playing an F-sharp because I think it's, just, you know, it's a, it's a rocking guitar key, and, uh, you know, in the position on the guitar neck actually allows for uh, a lot of freedom and a lot of creativity and, uh, you know, and a, lot, and a lot of different options. You know, and I think all of those elements come out uh, when playing the, uh, you know, the main riff to know your enemy which was uh, one of the more popular songs off of rage against the machines first album <laughs> As I mentioned before, I was turned on to, you know, the really, really early classic rock uh, of the late 60s and, uh, and 70s, you know, the Jimi Hendrixes, the, uh, you know, the Zeppelins, the Creams, uh, and one song that the first time I heard it was just, you know, every now and again you hear a riff of a song uh, for the first time and it just, you know, it just makes you think that is awesome. I have got to learn how to play that. And one of those riffs, uh, for me at a very early age was Sunshine of Your Love by Cream. You know, I've always liked the way that Clapton, you know, played, uh, you know, played the root notes at, as the intro of the song and then switched over to fragments of, uh, you know, fragments of the, of the chords for the rest of the song and, you know, still allowed himself uh, some flexibility for, you know, some various different changes, you know, so it didn't get too stagnant. Uh, throughout the song, but it's a, it's a great song, and in my my opinion, you know some of the you know some of the best guitar playing that Eric Clapton ever did. <laughs> One of the bands from that same era that inspired me the most was Led Zeppelin. And 
I don't know if I've ever said this on my channel before or not, but I'm not a I'm not a Beatles fan at all. I'm sorry, I'm I'm just not. They just never did anything for me. Zeppelin, on the other hand, inspired me. I don't want to say they inspired me before any other band, but they were they were pretty early. You know, one of their most iconic riffs, of course, is the main riff to Whole Lot of Love. But the one that I want to play today is off of that same record, but there, you know, it's actually two of them. The main riff to Heartbreaker and the main riff to Live and Love and Made. And those two songs, there was really no no break between them on the record and radio stations today that still play those songs almost always play both of them back to back <laughs> I mentioned earlier that I'm a huge fan of both Metallica and Megadeth, but I haven't played any Megadeth riffs yet in this list. Uh, Megadeth, you know, Dave Mustaine really likes to use these three notes on the fretboard when songwriting. And probably the most famous Megadeth song that I can think of that uses those three notes, of course, is, uh, you know, Symphony of Destruction. <laughs> Which is a great riff and a great song, but one of the heaviest songs I think that he ever wrote also used those exact same three notes. And it was the song that came out on the follow on the record that followed Countdown to Extinction called Euthanasia. Uh, I think it was the very last song on the album called Black Curtains, and it sounded like this. <laughs> Dimebag Daryl was one of the greatest metal guitar players to ever walk this planet, and it's a shame that he was taken from us uh, far, far sooner than uh, you know than he ever should have. And one thing that he did really, really, really well was write really awesome, unique, creative riffs. One that I had fun learning to play was off of uh, was off of the Far Beyond Driven record, which was their third album. Uh, which I think was actually the uh, I'm Broken, I think was actually the first, uh, you know, the first hit off of that record. <laughs> And last but not least, one of the very first riffs that I ever learned to play was the first part of Purple Haze by Jimi Hendrix. Uh, I was too young to understand what the meaning behind that song was. Uh, I just knew that uh, Jimi Hendrix was a you know was a pretty okay guitar player, and uh, this was a cool song. And this you know a lot of the people who inspired me were inspired by Jimi. And one of my earliest guitar teachers taught me how to play this song. <laughs> So thank you so much for taking the time to hang out with me here today. This is just uh, something that was a little bit uh, off base from regular gear demos. Uh, something to get away from doing gear demos for a little bit. Something a little different that I wanted to do uh, and uh, share with you some of, you know, the uh, you know some of the awesome music that inspired me when I was growing up and. Uh, and still continues to inspire me today. So I hope you enjoyed this video full of dad riffs all day long. And uh, don't forget to do the like, share, subscribe thing there at the end. Thank you so much for watching. Adios.